Hello there everyone and welcome to the third episode of Equestria War, in which we're playing as the Yaraldom of Chittal. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, but we got to rebut the Yaraldom of Sambar and invites Yaraldom of Chittal to the Deer Law Restorationists. It appears that Sambar it considers us to be a strategic interest to them, and they deem it more profitable that we work together than we, we should let ourselves be divided by our ideological differences. This morning, the Sambar ambassador delivered an invitation for us to become a member state of the Deer Law Restorationists. It is a profitable choice. We're better off without them, because because right now the all Indian national bloc is led by uh, the Doli Confederation as well as Abara Singa. Um, even though these guys are all dumb, uh, they're kind of independent. Legacy of 05, the Iron Regency, they'll probably die without us. And honestly, we got to come down here to look at this as well. The Indian Wars. Of course, the tensions are all hot time high. We're aligned with the Olinians, or we're Olinian aligned while they're Indian aligned. So it's probably better that we join them just because... Well, we're pretty fairly democratic, and uh, yeah, Benjamin loyalists or harmonic, I guess you should really say, and probably be in, honestly our best interests, because because why not, you know why not? As even though we could do this, even though we are forced, we're still doing the Republican detente, and we'll do other th stuff off off screen as well. But um, we're being forced to bolster traditionalist officers. The council decided the right wing in the army shall be supported for the Oskranby summit. Actually, we're gonna do this one too. Because now we can only we get a cost reduction for Grand Battle Plan or Mobile Warfare. So we choose one of those two. We should really choose one of those two. So The future of our army cannot be jeopardized by those two morally infirm and mentally incapable of running a uh, military. If Ifri Hodarnin, a staunch Jacobite staff officer of Olinian descent, has proven himself to be more than capable of a leader to uh, guide this radical transformation, we should remodel the officer corps this example, after this example, and promote him to martial at once. Of course, we do want to get down there pretty quickly, too. But, uh, yeah, the Army of a Modern Chitality. Or Chittal. Get okay, Perhoods out of it. Oh boy. Um, I'm just looking for things here just because. Ooh, more political power, huh? Or, or, or I guess I should say up and not political power. Close the bench in the 4th Industrial Bureau. Oh, good research slot. That'd be pretty nice. Oh, this would be good to get down there too. Oh god. The land auction just costs way too much right now. But, oh well. And of course, we read this one last time too, but there we go with this one. Better political power. Uh, so, Chief Minister Ivar Hovershom sat back with just a hint of resentment as Benjamin Devartanin took a puff of a cigar. His glasses carefully perched on his muzzle. Can't say I expected you of all dear to get that role. Believe me, I'm, I'm as surprised as you are, he responded, letting off a bit of his normal formality. And I mean no disrespect, since I know how much you wanted this role before you were the first cast out of the court. You reformed him, just so it was a bit too fiery for the time. That's the only way to save Chittal, Ivar protested. Look at Rayleigh. She's still going around preaching about her equestrianism straight to the Earl. Just like you were about republicanism. The Avertana simply raised an eyebrow as the truth of the matter sunk in. Ivar, we've been friends for a long time now. You've been a great sta state steer. Someone that's had many a great idea for Chittal that we could agree on. But you have to concede some of that, of that idealism if we're going to work together. The industrious lean forward, trying to get his point across. Harlan equestrianism, equestrianism is not the future of Chittal. Surely you can put aside some of your republicanism for the good of the nation too. Ivar grimaced, motioning or moving his head from side to side as if he was debating it, before finally sighing and moving to shake D Davir Tynan's hoof. All right, fine. Bench is not the worst you're all chittle could have, anyhow. Just make sure to keep me away from your Ailey. I don't know how long I can stand that equestrianist prattling. Davir Tynan smiled, I'll see what I can do. Just like old times, huh? First day at work. A bitter tomb scattered with flame made a glow all over, hotter than iron need for be for any craft, and such dire limits issued. Maja, would you please stick the, with the technical details? I stopped getting distracted. Sorry, she rode the back of her neck, slightly embarrassed. Got a bit carried away there, I just think it's cool. She cleared her throat. As I was saying, the pipes at the bottom there, they blast hot air into the already heated furnace, pushing the temperature even higher. That's why it's called a blast furnace, and it's what allows for pure, stronger, and faster steel production. A small crowd of engine, or engine deers, took notes as she explained and moved along the walkway with around the mouth of the furnace. It had just been installed, the first of its kind in the country, and these deer would take their design and technical details back to their own factories as part of the modernization plans. The future belonged to Chittal, and the future would be built of steel, and there was no better representation than what she was explaining before them. Any questions so far, she asked, a deer near the back raised a hoof. What do we do if we fall in? He asked nervously, glancing down over the lip of the blessedly inactive furnace. Die extremely quickly, so don't do that. Now over here we have a sample of new coal, coal coke mixture that we use for modern India. And of course we are war, but no more schemes, no more courts. Um, the Royal Court's nobility has proven to be of no help to Chittal, and only serves as a place for political schemes and alliances to push personal agendas upon the nation and its people. It shall be cast out and replaced with a new system of bureaucratic advisors directly to the Jarl, who will better advise him than any out of such noble or socialite could. So, also, we joined the faction, and then they went to war, or these guys went to war, so, uh, they're doing alright. The fall is standing at Lingrid, huh? Um, we have no manpower. We're trying to build an airbase, but then I realized we have no planes. 
So, yeah, we'll train with Skyfall, declare an end to uh, uprisings. We'll see what happens with that stuff. Political actions close out of that one. Um, I want to help them out, but these guys are also allied, and if we do that, then uh, we leave ourselves exposed. So we're not going to join any war yet, and they're doing all right for now, you know? Uh, oh, also, I guess we did get a lot of lend lease, which is pretty nice, to, truth be told. Like, free lend lease is always welcome with me. Um, we could do some war bonds. We could use some... We could really use some war bonds. Of course, we're trying to get some radio interception as well, but still. As we're trying to bolster traditionalist officers to get more Grand Battle Plan, because I love Grand Battle Plan. Ah, oh, beautiful. But let's go into this one too. No more schemes, no more courts. Of course. And I guess establish the uh, Kong Liga Rex Dagen. Cool. Finally, it's time to establish the structure we've been building the foundation for. This new parliament is Darvertan's final step, and with his guidance, his chief minister will finally step into the future Chittle needs. Benjamin remains as a respected figure to guide society while the state and policies led by Darvertanen and the ministerial technocrats he's appointed to advise. Nice. 101 naval XP, prior when civil war ends. Very cool. Get some decryption as well. Yeah, as long as they don't lose, I'm con not super concerned. We do want to raise the conscription level to at least con extensive conscription, but you know, we'll see. Chitali Meritocracies, which we'll read next. Daily Harm Support goes up. And we can't do anything over here, but that's alright. We did read this one last time. So if we read that again, please go ahead. Subsidize the Southern Nationalizations. Um, I can't remember if we read this one or not. Benjamin Darbertan and his modernists have helped open the gateway for the South Prosperity. And yet, simply ending the monopolies will not do as much good. The state needs the ability to... <clears throat> Oh, there they go. Uh, directly intervene and guide the process of industrialization, but doing so successfully would be difficult. A few subsidies is part of a wider plan proposed by Darvertano should smooth the process considerably. Oh, now they're attacking us quite crazily, too. Which is totally fine with us. Oh, you need a general, don't you? Um, what is this? Unpredictable. Way more attack, a little bit less organization, which is not bad. Go the Hills Fighter for now. As long as you can help defend, that's all I really care about right now. Because they have a couple of... Oh, that's manpower, which is fine. We need some serious pony power, though. But a Chitali meritocracy. The court was far different today. Uh, Yarl Benjamin had been used to the political life and nobility. After all, he dealt with them in his court for his entire reign. A secret intrigue, backstabbing. He had no love for it, but it was something he was used to. A mainstay of everyday acting as Yarl, hearing the complaints. Their suggestions usually ignoring a vast amount of them. Davertan had turned that all on its head. Calling it a court would be misleading. There was no nobility now, only bureaucrats and publicly appointed officials. Deer like Gabe had been completely sidelined, relegated to their own estates, and kept out of the new politics of Ostkranbi. Replaced with faceless stags and suits and ties, socialite extravagance had gone to debates on policy and state efficiency. It felt more like an office than a palace with Benjamin presiding all over it. It was certainly different. More boring, absolutely, but he did miss the old and exciting plots between the nobility. Did he really? And that was hard to say, though. At least he had to do less now, which was nice. Davar Tannen seemed to ride home, speaking with his fellow industrialists about matters that Jarl didn't even pretend to understand or care about. Something had been lost, a spark or spirit, and replaced with the same dull routine of daily government management. Oh well, at least Benji could do more, have more time to himself now. Maybe he could take, finally take Rusu out to the city, the city again, like he promised. Will democracy soon reign? Are we mobilizing? We are mobilizing. Oh, we just really need more manpower. I'll do it anyway, screw it. We're gonna really need more manpower. Yeah. Um, losses? 25. Um, we've only killed off 3,000 of them. Which is obviously not enough. Also, the divisions we are currently using um, are not bad. 18 combat width, engineers, artillery. So we have enough of that for the most part now. Uh, could use some more support, but, you know, like I said, we're going to wait. There's nowhere we could really attack too much. I mean, I'd like to attack here, here, here. That'd be kind of nice. Can you guys do that? Yeah, try that. If you can at least circle one division, that'd be not. Oh, boy. Uh, Hippogriffia sent some divisions, eh? Oh god, we can't even pierce him now. You know what? Hold then. We were doing well there until the Hippogriffs arrived. Those dastardly dudes. Um, God, it just costs so much, but go and get, grab that. Why not? Supplies are just so bad down here, too. For the most part, we can hold, which is nice, but still. Very aggressive people, as you see. Oh, do we lose here too? Oh goodness, well, that's really not good. We're losing a lot of organization very quickly, uh, but at least we get a crown republic. Nice. Can we actually beat him there? Maybe. Maybe not. And that's we could. 
Um, as much as I want to attack there, kind of losing. And I don't kind of want to support a losing attack. Just saying. There you go, get in there. Save this an extra division just in case. You guys support the attack right there too. She's an anti so anti tank. Not anti piercing, but anti tank. Again, we don't even have trucks. Oh god. We're so far behind, it's not even funny. Can we just wait and mobilize more? I think that would be probably for the best. As long as we don't lose here, that's what I care about. Back in there. City of Florina. Give them a little more organization first, and there you go. Um, this too. There you go. I would like that, but at the same time, we I do want to get down here quickly. So we did read this one last... Oh, did I read this one? I can't remember. It does not matter how much factories or how much industry we have, there's no deer educated in the ways of using or working them. The shortage of qualified and educated workers need to be rectified immediately. Trade schools will be open so our population can be educated on their opportunities and how to take advantage of them. That's a good idea. I really want to help out down here, but they seem to be doing all right, so... I'm not super concerned about them down there now. But just hold out as much as you can. Nice. We've lost a couple thousand, eight thousand. We've got a thirty-three thousand, which is not bad. Or thirty-one thousand, I guess, from us, but still. That casualty ratio is not too shabby. Can you guys do anything here, maybe? Maybe not. Can you guys do anything there, maybe? Maybe not. Can you do anything there, maybe? Maybe not. Just little pringly attacks. Nice. Revive magical education. Magic is part of a deer's inherent nature, and it's important that we are educating the matter such as we as much as anything else. The ancient rights of the deer are part of a heritage, and the Hamaholm school of magic will allow the next generation to learn as the forefathers did. Longships and traitors. I think I read this one earlier too, but whatever. Our history of Vikingar is long and full of great tales of glory, but with the rating international shipping being generally frowned upon in the modern era, our diplomacy requires a new strategy. The long ships once used would be excellent trade ships as well, bringing back spoils with a different in a nation less controversial way, which I remember reading last time as well. Nice. Still doing well down there? Just cut them off. Please, for the love of God. They're definitely attacking now. Should be able to win right there, too. Losses. We're pretty good for this stuff. Trucks need more. Which manpower do they have? Do they must have been mobilizing more? No? Okay. They need no more guns. Of course, our guns are pretty god awful, too, but still. Come on, move down. Libraries across Chittal. Establishing a network of free public libraries full of both of educational and enjoyable text will hopefully encourage literacy and education among your subjects. After all, there's nothing like reading a good book with friends, especially if you learn something to it from, or from it too. The informal education will help guide the young into what they want to become and how they can be part of the nation. Ah, uh, pretty good idea to me. But who am I? War economy would be nice, but I don't want to lose any more political power, so. Um, war bonds. Hey, look, we have some manpower finally. Yay! Of course, we do this one too. Crush the movement. Industry Bureau, employees first. Revolution of the Crystal Empire, huh? Crush the movement. Employers first. Legalize labor unions. Maybe employers first. 
Using the relatively new arrival at Chittal, as their industrialization has been limited at best, but as the factories open, so do the pa parlors of the union bosses. Unions are a threat to the traditional economic structure that's created capital across the world for generations, but they allow workers to defense against abuse. So we should tolerate them and some regrets and some rights, but we must always think with our wallet. Oh, good God, what is going on here? If anything, I want to go right there. Well, it wasn't the circumstance I was expecting, but certainly one that we got. Out more output? Uh, wait for that. Matters most to kill them all off. Look at that manpower. Love it. It's a terror. Ah, screw we're all about political power for now. Research speed's nice too. That's a thousand little historians. Oh, we get a research slot, which is what's something we want as well, so. Modern society, a thousand little historians. The library that stood three stories tall and was crammed with a row upon row of books upon every subject imaginable. Who had never seen too many books in his life? And was there even this many books in the world? Over here, class. Miss Lagari called, gathering the fawns around several tables. Today we're going to do a little history project about the Chittles' past. I'd like you to pick a book at random from the history section over there and see what you can learn. Then we'll have a chat on what you've discovered. This new library is open and should have all sorts of interesting books. She smiled at the class. If you need any help, just let me know. The class floated away to the history section, Hunar wandering through the shelves trying to find something that caught his eye. He couldn't reach the top shelf, so sticking to the lower ones, he passed by many tiles he didn't understand. The last Stagal, the Great Partition, our moon has blood clots, the fall of Bombay. Uh, the one found a book out his eye, The Devil Walks, the story of Johann I. Lifting the book and flicking through the pages, he read the tales of great battles, warriors fighting for conquest, <clears throat> political intrigue, murder mysteries. He lost track of time as he turned through the pages, each twist and turn of the king's life leading him deeper into the pages. Finally, Miss Lagari broke him from his concentration. Uh, Hunar over here, she called, smiling to himself with his discovery, trotted back to the table, book and hoof, and sitting down among the class. So what do you think of this king, Johann? Fleet and being? Sure, why not? Because we can. They just love attacking us. Begin industrial regulations. How oh, more consuming goods? Keep her hooves out of it. Industrial regulations have only allowed to increase strain on the government and business through bureaucracy and red tape. Try and have the administration watch over everything and enforce every code balloons. Costs are transferred down to the citizenry. Letting the market take its course is the inevitable best solution in the long run. You best not lose, son. Tip of the spear, relief of command. Oh. Is it just a fo call focus? Oh, you know what? We'll do that one anyways, because we can. Get our mouse ever so slightly here. Oh, they won! So they can have that, and we'll take this nation too. Okay. I'm okay with that. 110,000 lost, not bad, not bad. Of course, not supplies, probably gonna be really bad, but whatever. Hello, wow. Still get one, almost 1.8 a day, which is pretty darn good. I guess we'll air adoption, I guess. Still trying to attack there, huh? I don't got a lot of ships. Do have some. More research speed, yes, please. And get some more artillery. Interrogation techniques.
Oh. Um. Just keeping our hooves out of it. And of course, we start using trade shows. Own pact of uh, this one. Probably do this one. Restore the eastern trade routes. The ancestors of the Olenians came from the east, sailing from their homeland in Olenia. By looking back this direction, we find the wealthy and industrialized equestria along open to our longships. The time, this time, however, there won't be any sacking. And close the bench of the fourth industrial bureau. The bureau served its purpose, and the time has come to close this chapter of Chitali history. Our industrial progress is far beyond what it once was. We must not give thanks to what we've entered the modern era. Whether we pray to the Olenian gods or to Ma Matahama, bread shall be broken this night as Chitali enters the annals of modern together history. now. We're not split by our Hindu or Alenian heritage. We are Chitali together as one and the same, we're united by our common belief in the idea of harmony. We have our differences, and there may be issues we can never reconcile, but no longer shall we be judged solely by our birth or our ancestors. Friendship brings us together, and now we're better than ever. Chitali safety net. The world of today is one of hardship and poverty, but these are not things we must be forced to live with. To help alleviate these troubles of society, Yarl Benjamin V and Dalver Tannen have announced a widespread welfare safety net. Make sure that people have what they need to survive and prosper. Hopefully, this will also take so much need to train off the overextended properties of the RMEC. Very nice, 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 nice. Uh, we're just trying to prove ourselves here as, as much, as much, as much, as much, as much as possible. And public private synthesis. Both the public and private sectors of the economy have the strengths and the weaknesses. The answer is not to swing completely one way or the other, but to find a careful balance between the two merging state business and corporations into one system beneficial for the, for the nation, the business, the and the people. That also give us the flexibility and prosperity plus into a new brighter era, a new cultural assimilation. The parts of both the Indian and Indian culture that are unique and should be encouraged. But at the same time, we cannot let such petty differences fragment us and causing infighting. Both must come together and assimilate into a new unique blend of their dear unity, of two pieces becoming one whole so that we all may see each other as equals and partners. As they're slowly ch still trying to kill these guys off, which is taking forever, but whatever. Oh, we're going to considered a major power, huh? Oh, well. You guys do that. You guys do that. We got a little more organization, hopefully, to work with. Um, I'll have to encircle these guys a little bit more. We've got quite a bit of air XP, but no planes, which is kind of weird to think about, but whatever. Nice. I do want to do kind of a general attack, but I know we won't do that well. Um... I'm going to restart that too. That'd be fine for now. We're trying to improve ourselves here too. So the economy, most of the stuff is already done, which is very nice. Grab what? Adaptable? Oh, you bet we do. You bet we want adaptable. And we almost have them. Come on. There you go. Now if we get assault here and win, that'd be a fit, not min. No. Sure, more breakthrough, more uh, was it organization? I think, too. Nice, come on, you got this. Keep them in place. Good, get over there. We got plenty of political power now. Let's do that because it's gonna hurt our war sport now, too. Anyways, good. Doesn't matter if you win or lose, as long as we destroy these divisions, it's all I really care about. Infantry specialist? Sure, you can become one. Become an infantry expert as well. Very nice. Political actions. Making more roads, which is alright. Get some more of that. That'd be good. Coming down there would be nice too. Public private synthesis. It's alright. No, I want you to go this way. Nice. And suicide pills, very yummy, yummy, yummy. Going to hold for now, everybody. I want to take this tile too. There you go. Of course, next we'll do this one too. Right here, champions of the great struggle. The Indian wars are over, and we have emerged victorious with our opposition defeated. However, the truth is becoming clear that there can be only one nation to unite India. To claim our destiny, we must continue our march and finish what our ancestors started. Oh boy. Can't wait. Yeah, this is a victory point. Uh, well, it is a victory point, but uh, supply base too. So these guys should not have any supply now. Capital's over here, so how do they get supply through here? 
I kind of want to do a general attack, but I kind of don't think it'll do it that well. Um, might be able to do okay there. Force it. That's four divisions we can eliminate, and then we can do a general attack that way. 2.32 every day, not bad. Come on, you got this, come on. Don't let him move. Come on, come on. Come on. Jesus Christ. Just kill them off. Oh my god. Just hurry up. There you go. Thank God. Don't hold. Uh, here, for that one too. You need planes too. Alright, so you guys do this too. Just kill them all. Run it out. What do you do with people? You just kill them all. Nice. Uh, we'll see about the, that general attack. Honestly, let's shore it up. We, don't, we shouldn't need to defend them. And then we'll do that too. Oh, a smaller movement that way, maybe. And then a smaller movement this way, maybe. Let's not do a general attack just yet. Doing fine. Still repairing, which is fine. Um, kind of want to attack there, but we wouldn't do very well for a while. Unless they already attack us too. Get us over that river, that'd be best. Always support the attack there. Oh, look at that, nice. I do want to attack there, but we probably attack here next. That'd be nice. How much manpower they really actually do have? 30 divisions with nothing left. 54,000 manpower. Hopefully, going to be going down a little bit further as well. Mm, I know it's taking a while for us to get through here, but whatever. And nice. Help me out. Mar Marichi? Maricha. Maricha. Nice. Piercing. They got Mount. Might as well. There we go. All sorts of attack across the front line. Two divisions. I might make it three, maybe. And that's the last one. Nice. Very nice, actually. Very, 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 very nice. Let these guys move around. If there's only one, get out. You guys could do that in this. Actually, win there. That actually be very good for us. Come on. Six, seven, eight, nine, maybe. There we go. Let's go and hold real quick. We wait for this stuff, which is fine. Uh, Formalize the Chital Air Force. The Chitali Air Force may not be technically existing, but the groundwork for it already exists. Wealthy nobles, leisure pods, and foreigners have all contributed to our knowledge of air power. Even if it's more narrow yacht club with guns. If we formalize into an official part of the military, perhaps we can turn them into something more useful. Procuring new fighters. Uh, no. 
Let's see if we try and test a grand battle plan. Well, we are going that way, so. Why should we complicate war with newfangled tractors with guns on them when weathering and swarming the enemy? No elaborate plans always works. Why waste valuable time and resources on developing armored vehicles when we can instead destroy enemy armies in one fell dramatic swoop? There's plenty of experience to draw from to create a truly concrete battle, grand battle plan. Royal Military Companies. The Chitali Arms Industry is a collection of cottage private arms manufacturers and who full of state owned factories. Now, the Jacobites have voiced concerns about the inability of the current state of our military industrial complex to fulfill the needs of a growing army. We should move to not just subsidize new military factories throughout the country, but also establish Chitali State Armory, conserving our deer. There's nothing more important in our military than our soldiers, who, uh, those who are out on the battlefield fighting in our flag. Thus, it sense that we should attempt to keep as many of them alive as possible, and spare no effort in keeping them in fighting shape. Such advances will also benefit the civilian sector, that we invest in the proper infrastructure and employment. Of course. Nice. 400,000, my goodness. We have to have this group. Supply base that we just have to have. No matter what. Uh oh. Come right there. Here. Come right here. We got it. Nice. Super, super nice. Because that's now connected to the port. And then when we get supply from the capital, we'll be good. Ah, there we go. Oh, this one up though. This one too, maybe? There you go. That'll be built very soon. Which is very good. Tried and tested. Godra industrial plans. How's Godra, home to some of Chittle's most renowned pilots, will be instrumental in creating a respectable Chitali Air Force that can hold its own in the skies. Renowned for their deer like frames and nimble nature, the designers have offered their help should we invest in the industry and air bases for them to do their work. A simple agreement with wide ranging benefits for both sides. The subject of Sambar. Uh, Sambar, the other state born of Alenian subjugation, remains an oppressive Yaldum under a tyrannical regent who refuses to give its bloodline to the throne. The Iron Regency must come to an end in the nation absorbed in India. Manfred will submit whether he wants to or not. On um, the issue of isolationists, as well as deal with Dohli, have, uh, were auto completed, so there's that, and Deer kind of stood up. For the first time in centuries, the Indian region has been united under one banner. Finally, all of Deer kind can stand together, stronger than has ever been before, and ready to ensure its freedom and pride. It's time to turn our gaze outwards and take our place on the world stage. The Indian Confederacy. Ooh. That's cool. You can core stuff, too. I don't know how much stuff there actually was here, so... That's kind of cool. Um, advanced artillery will come in handy. Let's grab some military more military police, because we'll need that, even though we need more support companies. It is what it is, of course. And now we got to kill these guys off, too, which is going to take forever to do. Go figure. Um, we need more manpower, of course, whatever. What else is new? Um, actually, since we're here, let's go into this anyway. It's better already, thank you. Occupation, we're doing that stuff. Uh, military police would be pretty decent to have as well. Save a little bit of manpower. If we have to go to service by requirements, so be it. That's fine with us. But we're going to continue with the sides, too. Good serving our deer, of course. Uh, of course, we read this one, too, I think. Uh, House Godra, home to some of Chittle's most renowned pilots, will be instrumental in creating a respectable Chitali Air Force that can hold its own in the skies. Renowned for the dead deer-like light frames and nimble nature, the designers have offered their help should we invest in the industry and their basis for them to do their work. A simple agreement with wide-ranging benefits for both sides. For creating new fighters. If we're to grow our Air Force to any significant uh, operational capacity, we'll need to first procure actual aircraft, fighters. The base of all strategic air maneuvers can be easily purchased through countries wishing to thin their inventory. We should look for sources of these new opportunities from wherever possible. Um, no. 
Huderen motorized plans. The days of long, exhausting infantry maneuvers on the battlefield are over. Marshal Hudernin has long been an advocate for modernization and mechanization, which would give our command level units uh, units greater maneuverability and flexibility in the battlefield. The future is now, and the future is dearer, dearer on wheels. Core Infantry Research Departments. All warfare is a matter of infantry. While our strategic theories or, may, or theaters may have gone lost with developing new tanks or new ways of building trenches, we have not forgotten the importance of the soldier who truly carries a day. A hoof full of industrial concerns have requested the government to fund new research departments and obliging them would ensure an infantry of the best weapons available. Interbranch coordination. Every branch of our, our land forces should be committed towards accomplishing the same mission. By integrating the commands of different branches towards this greater joint strategic command, we'll be able to coordinate all elements of our army to succeed at a united objective. Tap into Olenia magic. Dear kind is blessed with magic. Promotions are premonitions of the future and a spiritual link to the past guide the present being for dear. The land we trot, the skies breathing in wind over our heads. They're all extensions of our corporeal reality, and we can and should weaponize that. We should look towards synergizing our tactics with the magic of Olenian's masters of cold weather warfare and logistics. Of course, we'll do that one. Oskranbi Alliance, and then securing the south. Lambad is a wild mountainous place which long ago was part of India. Despite them being llamas instead of deer, they are critical in our securing a similar flank from aggression. No matter what we choose to do with them, it's clear that the high deserts must be under our control for the safety of India. Liberate the deer of Stagpal. It's a small state, one on the border between India and Lambet, with a sizable population of deer and llamas. Despite this, it remains part of India, and thus belongs under our banner. Let's reclaim these mountains and give them into the people a new nation to call home. Usu Hrvima, or war. Lands of Usi are sacred to all Indian deer. It is from here that we first rose and spread like across India, whether it be for the original Indians or the Alanians who came after. It's an insult that remains out of our influence, and such an insult cannot be standing. No matter what, the island will be part of India again, no matter the cost. Legacy of the Seeking Being. Uh, Legacy of Seekings. The Seekings, the Thalassocratic masters of the Deep Blue from centuries past, showed the world with the grand fleets of power of the people. Nowhere was beyond the might and justice of dear kind, and no evil could resist our, with righteous wind in our sails. Now is the time for us to look to the past so we may to command great fleets and conquer a place among the glorious few in the coming storm. Um, what's the large scale construction? The strongest ships. A mighty open seas fleet is not only imperative for maintaining the interests of our country abroad, it's crucial for barrier survival. Dedicating resources towards research and development on more advanced battleships will ensure that no foreign navy can cripple our future.
annexation of Husi Hervima. The Makawians have conceded to our demands and agreed to return to us the island of Husi Hervima. Local leaders. Other protectors are already on route back to their homeland. The local dear cheers their own administrators enter to replace them. This insult to Hindian pride and unity has finally been rectified. The legacy of our uprising is safe and secure within the nation again. Excellent. Oh, look at that. Nice. Very nice. Awesome. 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 Local autonomy. Local autonomy is good. Um, Lambit. Integration, of course. As we were preparing to like just create a huge bunch of battleships, that's going to take years to do. Oh well. Um, so we're doing the integration of protector of Lambeth. We've conquered Lambeth, but we do not mean to come in as conquerors or oppressors. Dear do not lamas, in a native administration would serve us better than direct occupation anyways. A new protector shall be created by locals who oversee the new territory, which with servid suppression or supervision, of course. We approach Makawia. Despite their own lawful and downright insulting occupation of Usi Hervima, the Makawians do not need to be our enemies. We would be better off as friends than enemies, and a few gestures of our reproachment should, should do a lot towards cementing our new friendship. Especially in the growing danger of the new world. Doctrine is available, air doctrine. A jubilee and jubilee. Uh, the Kiran to herself have long been a peaceful, harmonic monarchy, but even now still suffer from the effects of self inflicted silence imposed upon them. While wishing to keep themselves restrained from their neuric state is understandable, there's a better way to move forward as, as friends. The Jarl and his entourage have already scheduled a meeting in the port of Jubilee. Hopefully, they'll be willing to listen. A uh, Hindian Jarl and the Empress Port. Huh. Chitali Friendship Corps. Our harmony may have been victorious in India, but elsewhere in the world there are so many regimes struggling to cast off their chains of oppression or fighting against a tyranny of nations who seek their downfall. So our duty to aid them with the means that will be used to liberate ourselves, no matter where they may be. Your kingdom in the north. Oh, look at that. A symphony to break all silence. Well, okay, why not? With well, the stage set, it's finally time to free the Kirin from their long silence, working extensively with Lorraine Shine and Vermilion Realm. With one swift move, we'll allow millions to once again experience the true wonders of life, and the chance for a true friendship. It may not be easy for either of us, but we'll both emerge for stronger. Nice. Look at the French, of course. Oh, look at that. Wow. A protector for Lambit. Despite a conquest of the region of Lambit, it's clear that the direct occupation of Lambit is unsustainable, after all. We're two very different races with our own cultures, way of life, and national identities. An autonomous, uh, our protector has already been chosen, headed majority by local lamas willing to work with us in a new government. And it seems that the transition to a loyal state with a future a long friendship with India is, of course, assured. However, we are left with one decision to make. Even though the administration is local, the protector needs a protector. A dear one from India could also be trusted to lead as well and in the interest of both India and Lambert. Some dear loyal, uh, some dear loyal, trusted and above all competent. Fortunately, we do have quite a few options to choose from. As the court has bred many a doe and stag who is fit for the job. The question is now is, who do we nominate to lead our new autonomous subject state? Eric Baronin, the bureaucrat. We are released Lambert in a meadow. I want to give Jacob a throne to sit on. Hmm. The general. The bureaucrat. Jacob Kudlinen. The bureaucrat. Well, let's go with the bureaucrat for this one. Darn it, I wanted to integrate them. Whatever. That just means less manpower to use to assimilate them. Biased business, dear. Hey, it's communist sentiment. Since when? Oh, we went popular. Oh, that sucks. Oh, but it's going to still get this anyway, so that'll help offset it at least a little bit. I don't know if they could actually go down the way at the same time. Huh. Okay. Just in case. Military training? Why not? Might as well, right? Might as well. Friendship groups would be nice too. Trade offer from Coltheg. Representatives from Coltheg have come to us proposing a trade treaty between two nations. The agreement would remove all barriers to mutual trade, paving the way for increased cooperation and economic relations. Coltheg has traditionally been known as the gateway to Zebra Cup, being an important nexus between East West trade and entrepot for goods coming across the countless Zebrakin trade routes. Although devastated by the Storm King's invasion in recent years, at this point they seem to have fully recovered. Signing this treaty would fully open up Coltingian markets to us, giving us access to valuable goods such as coffee, pearls, porcelain, ivory, and sugar, to just to name a few. But it also might result in economic disruption for us in the short term, increased interdependence with Coltheg in the longer term. Should we accept the proposal? No, they can't, of course, be. Makawi accepts invitation to the Oskarambi Alliance. Uh, Makawi has decided to accept our offer to join the Oskarambi Alliance, hence we shall stand or fall together. So we shall set our side or differences for now, which is nice. Um, uh, they want to assume faction ownership, huh? As they're doing a jubilee and jubilee, but sympathy to, uh, symphony to break all silence. 
With the stage set, it's finally time to free the Kirin for their long silence, working extensively with the rain shine of Vermilion Realm. With one swift move, we will allow millions to once again experience the true wonders of life and the chance for true friendship. It may not be easy for either of us, but we will both emerge stronger for it. More plan black and white. I didn't realize how violent we'd end up being. Ooh. Uh, black and white. Gold Thag, a nation with a long history of political instability, is now unfortunately a potential threat to our harmonic value. They may claim that they have no ill intentions towards us, yet their explicitly anti-harmonic values means that we will inevitably find ourselves on opposing sides of conflict. We must strike westward and topple the tyrannical regime that oppresses the Carthaginian people. Warplan Crimson. Griffiths has been famous for its successful trade ventures in the region, but with the knightly order now having taken over the rifle, government of all of southeastern Griffonia is in jeopardy. Defending our harmonic interests abroad is a necessity, and a military order must fall. Warplan Blue. Um, Osterlan, our bro brothers across the sea, went through a troubled period of modernization as much as we have. Their turn, however, has gone for the worse, with an oppressive leader now spreading fear among the servants of Grafonia. As one of the foremost dear nations of the world, we must step in and protect our fellow people. Or plan purple. Barad is a menace to the very concept of harmony. Their second twisted experiments threaten all that is good in the world, and their expansion to the coastline will get far out of control. I have left unchecked. There now falls to us to stop this terror before it can go any further. Which I think they can't even do because they're already dead, but whatever. Um, more playing stuff? Yes. Cast, 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 cast. We got plenty of PP now. Lots of PP. Just, just nothing but PP here. And if we do go to war with these guys, we definitely want to make sure we have uh, uh, enough supply through here. And enough of that too. And enough of that too as well. Yeah, we want a lot of supply if we're going to do anything like that. Air stuff. And now we're doing land option. Nice. We got some recon guys too. That'd be pretty nice. We got plenty of guns, artillery. Anti tank. Well, I wanted to get that earlier, but whatever for now. Anti-air, well, whatever for now, I don't want to see that anyways. Light tanks, probably not. A Hindian Jarl and the Empress' support. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. The Varro is clearly struggling to keep his voice under control as a meeting. Reach its fifth, fifth hour with no end in sight. How are we supposed to get anything done if they don't speak? That's the point where we we're trying here, or why we're here. Uh, I'll really remain the said states here, but I do admit this is getting rather frustrating. The Karen dignitaries present, including the matriarch superior rain shine, so please tilted their heads. If I raised his hoof to his forehead as his sister attempted to calm him down, and both Ava and Darver Tannen huddled closer to the Yarrow. I must admit, attempting communication with a party that did not speak imposes an intriguing challenge to industrial commented. Uh, uh, I've spent many years in the Chittal courts, and even I can't see what they're thinking. Ava nodded, perhaps the Yarrow may be able to help? She and Darver Tannen turned to Benjamin. You're the Yarrow of all of Hindia now. If any of them will listen, it'll be you. Uh, Benjamin nodded and stood forward, grabbing the attention of the Kirin present. Make sure he started respectfully to arrange shine. I understand why you believe in this silence. Conflict is difficult and there's always a risk involved. But you can't give up your laughter because you're scared of a little pain. For Kirin took up their heads, and Chittal had to take risks too. We couldn't have achieved harmony without them, and even when I had my life on the line, we still achieved peace in the end. We, all of Hindia, can help you regain your voices again, but only if you let us help you. Rainshine looked at her fellow Kirin, presumably to gauge the opinions of the Kirin, but the deer there could not. Then she gave a single nod and slowly walked away the rest of the entourage in tow. Was that a yes? Darvartanen asked. Kieran shrugged. I guess it's the best we'll get. That's a good start, at least. Which is a good thing. You know, it's always good to have a good start. Uh, need more political power, manpower, we don't want everything else like that. And if we do have to fight these guys, maybe we should have not deleted that anti-tank, but whatever. Oh, they own that. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, anti heiress access. Oh. Well, at least these guys have a good navy, right? They are our allies. Um, yeah, their navy is 122. It's not bad. I did not realize that this would be so bad. Oh, they got a big fleet though. Ooh. They don't have a good fleet though. Plutocracy, huh? Quite a few divisions, you know, in the meantime then, I guess we'll do this too. We'll beat these boys up then. Make them nice and beefy. Because we, we love the beefy boys. If they're not beefy, we don't want them. Oh, we got enough manpower. Or deer power for this, really. Um, stuff over here still that needs to be integrated. We'll get in there though. Uh, we might actually have enough to do that. Potentially. Put the cannons, come over here for naval bomb of twos. Cast one, yes please. Do that, do that, do that. Share the wealth. It's enough support coming for now too. Get a more planes up. McCollins saw battleship pull. Now nah, we're good. All stuff is pretty garbage. Oh, whoops. Better two. So we can go fight a three as we can. Oh, 
All right then. Once we get level twos or threes, then we'll upgrade them so, quite a bit. So we're out of anything. No, we have enough artillery, light tanks. Now we're good. And that's that. I need to break the silence. Silence broken. It's been quite an evening, or an event quite some time in the making, even though the Ural persuaded the Matriarch Superior to finally end the silence for good. Kyria was a massive country, and with such... Uh-oh. The day was peaceful. Um, such an undertaking was not something easily done. The special team needed to lift the spell needed to be created in mass with help from Chitali advisors. And many Indians personally worked with the Kirna overseeing the volunteer transportation, administration, and distribution of the necessary materials. Friendships were struck. Kiran laughed and cried and cheered for the newfound voices. Praise has never been higher, and the ties between Hindi and Kiri have never been stronger. Of course, not everything is perfect again. Cases of Nirix have once again started appearing, arguments arising and resulting in chaos and instability within the Kira nation. We've done our best to help contain and limit these events as well as repairing any damage done during the rampages. It may take a few years for these events to finally subside, but until then we are more than happy to help in calming Nirix so that we can once again find they can once again find their peace. Rancher has given the Yarl her personal thanks for the help in both convincing the Kirin to break their silence and helping to remove it entirely. A uh, formal agreement has been signed up, promising eternal friendship between our nations and a promise of aid should come under come under external attack, hopefully. It'll never come to that, but at least we know that now we have a truly new harmonic and free people willing to help in Kyria. Nice, a new dawn. The day was painful. It was a picturesque view of all of Oskrambi. Seeing the sun and vast city filled with deer, Indians and Olinians alike, harmony changed Shito for the better, and the people loved their Jarl more than ever before. But demonstrations of the port of Benjamin were still not, not enough to exactly be considered common. One would not be surprised to see a procession occur. Today, however, the streets were silent. Benjamin preferred this way, at least at the moment. Distractions were the last thing he needed at the moment, given what he was doing. I'm sure he'll be a fine girl when he comes of age, Darbar Tannen said as he watched the young fawn walk around legs so weak. He has a sharp mind, and I'm sure he'll inherit Rusu's charisma. I was thinking a more question name would have fit better, or I only added. The lie between teasing and seriously incredibly thin. Hasn't there been enough vengeance by now? The Jarl smiled as he saw the new heirs of the stone, throne stumble and carefully tried to get up again. Well, you know, Jakob would have given me a whole talk if I hadn't done a traditional name. Besides, he said, eyeing one of his advisors, he just wasn't named after the royal line. I beg your pardon. Well, the deer laughed as Darbertano was so startled that his glasses fell off his muzzle, eyes blinking rapidly. You can possibly possibly mean... Oh, he certainly does. Rusu had become a regular on the council ever since the marriage between her and Rial had gotten made official. Just one of the many things the reforms had allowed him to get away with. Benjamin was quite insistent on him. He said he wanted to uh, be able to have two great deer to look up to when he grows up. And he'll be able to choose whatever he wants to be, the Yarl uh, pulled Rusu clothes, both of them looking at the newest Benjamin in the bloodline. Well, the freedom of being an artist, scholar, teacher. I don't know who it will be, but I know no matter what he chooses, the future is bright for him. Bright for all of us. The sun shines brightly over India. Thank you so much for playing the Jarldom of Chittal to completion. We hope you enjoy the Jarl Benjamin V and his glorious harmonic transition. Any bugs or suggestions can be reported at discord.gg slash equestriate war. The devs are great. I mean, I, I complain and bitch and moan a whole bunch, but like, the devs are just absolutely great for this mod. I mean, my goodness, you cannot ask for better devs. So, um, at this point, uh, I'm going to try it off screen, not, or uh, do some, uh, uh, which one do we want to do this one? Griffonian Empire, Free Downs Griffiths, uh, Free Empire, but, uh, really, we want, we're going to go this way anyway, so if you're going to that, please go ahead. Indian Reconnaissance was good too. Begin Bomber Development. An army of modern Chittal would be good too. So read about this as we are going to be doing this as a uh, probably time lapse. So. Guess this is going to be pretty bloody. So I'll see you on the other side. Well, everybody, this is much more difficult than I thought it would be, and uh, it's a good end game boss, which you do think, but I think we're going to end it there. We're struggling quite a bit, and it's not going great, but uh, hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.